Hello students, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss uh, the periodic trend in the ionization enthalpy. In the previous video, we have discussed about the atomic radius. And in this video, we are going to discuss the ionization enthalpy. So, uh, the heading of the student's video, trend, periodic trend this property, today we will discuss the IO ionization energy or this is another name ionization So today's video is concentrated on the ionization energy. What is ionization energy? Let us first understand. It is basically the quantity measurement of the tendency of the atoms of the element to lose electron. To lose the electron form the atom and it is been defined by that is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in the isolated state in its gaseous and ground state. So we must define this ionization enthalpy like this way. So ionization energy is defined as the energy requirement that we need some energy to remove an electron from isolated and gaseous ground state of the atom must be in gaseous state, in ground state and is isolated. So at that time energy required to remove one and electron that would be called the ionization energy. It is again called the first ionization enthalpy. First ionization enthalpy is the enthalpy change is the enthalpy change for a gaseous atom or a gaseous atom suppose this atom is x Enthalpy change for the gaseous atom in the following reaction. Following reaction. It is the it is the first ionization enthalpy is the enthalpy change for a gaseous atom in the following reaction. Reaction is this. And it is denoted by this way. Del I. I stands for ionization energy, ionization enthalpy. Enthalpy change. This is del I H is basically the enthalpy change in this reaction where you can see that electron is removed, electron is isolated from that neutral. And this is called the first ionization enthalpy. In this fashion, there is another ionization enthalpy that is the second ionization enthalpy. In that enthalpy, that is the enthalpy change when 
we, we removed the second loosely electron from the cation. Naturally, we must, this is called the first ionization method. First ionization method. And it has been put like this IE1. This is called one stand for first. Then second reaction, suppose we want to further remove another electron from this cation and in that case this will be called as the second ionization ethylene. This is called second ionization ethylene. This is called second ionization enthalpy. In this way, there will be third ionization enthalpy, fourth ionization enthalpy, dependent on, on the process. So, what is the magnitude of the ionization energy for this first, second, or third? Naturally, the first ionization energy value will be less than the second ionization energy value, that is, be less than. The third ionization enthalpy value. So, first ionization energy is much more less than the second ionization energy, then it is third ionization energy. Why it is so? Because you can easily remove an electron from a neutral atom. As compared, when it is charged, positively charged, that you cannot able to remove another electron from this because the attractive force on the valence of electron will be higher in case of positively charged ion because there is the nuclear charge given the same so attractive force on the valence will be higher so you need higher amount of energy to remove the electron so this second ionization enthalpy always Greater than this first ionization of enthalpy and the third one also is greater than this. The unit of ionization enthalpy is present as kilojoule per so unit of ionization enthalpy. Unit of ionization enthalpy. Enthalpy is kilojoule per mole. One mole, suppose you have taken one mole of atoms and how much kilojoule is taken to remove the remove an electron from those one mole of your atom that will be called the ionization enthalpy. That will be called the ionization energy. So unit is kilojoule per mole. Until and unless it has been told about the which type of ionization energy is, it will be always be considered as the first ionization enthalpy. So I think the concept of ionization enthalpy clear to you. It is basically the energy that is required to remove an electron from the atom. And it also appears that there will be always the energy requirement for this. So, ionization energy will be always positive. Ionization energy will be always positive as compared to the electronic enthalpy and other type, other form of enthalpy. But ionization enthalpy is always positive. Okay. So, I think that is clear to you what is ionization enthalpy. Now we will discuss what is the trend in a periodic table that is in the groove and down the down the groove and across the groove that we will discuss later.
प्यारे बाबा मिठे understand how the ionization enthalpy behave across the period and down the group let us have look on the ionization enthalpy for the first 60 element and from this we will able to understand it okay so this is the graph in this graph in the x direction there is the atomic number Y direction that is the ionization enthalpy. Hydrogen and this is your helium. And you can see the ionization enthalpy for the hydrogen is below 1500 and in the helium it is above 2500 after that there is a drop of ionization enthalpy and this is lithium and after that beryllium then boron So you can see in the second field there is a curve is like this and then it comes to the sodium after that This is the graph you can see for the first 60 element and uh, in that this is been this graph is been drawn to understand how the ionization enthalpy has been behaving uh, across the uh, fields and it is uh, down the group. You can see this periodicity of this ionization enthalpy is very much striking. You can see here helium there is a maximum point of this curve where the ionization enthalpy is very very high and this is for your noble gases that is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon all those having the highest amount of ionization enthalpy because of the fact their cell is completely filled their cell is completely filled and you will need a higher amount of energy to remove any electron from them. And you can see there is a minimum point in this curve 
this minimum point correspond to the alkali metal. Then you could see lithium, then sodium, then potassium, rubidium, and cesium. So you can see in the mini minimum ionization enthalpy is for this alkali metals and maximum ionization enthalpy for your noble gas. So lithium and this group one members will show the low ionization enthalpy and that is why they have been called the very much reactive element. So this is the trend, this is the general trend. So we can write general trend across across the period in so across the period increase in the ionization enthalpy and down the groove decrease in the ionization enthalpy. But there is an exception of this general trend we can observe in the second groove element or you can observe third groove element, third period element also. You can observe in the second period element and also the third period element. That we you can see this is the term for the second period element. Here you can see this is a lithium. Lithium I'm having the five R for the second period element. And you can see the first element is lithium and lithium having the ionization enthalpy is 500. Then beryllium around 1000. After that, this is the boron. This is your carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, and neon. You can see there is a exception here and here also. Two exceptions you can see. It should be defined otherwise because a general trend says that as we go across the period, it will the ionization enthalpy will be increased, but it is not so for the beryllium and boron and nitrogen and oxygen. Question arises why it is so. That question can be answered from the electronic configuration of the beryllium. Beryllium has the electronic configuration is 1H2, 2H2. Right? So, this is configured beryllium and configuration of boron is 1H2, 2H2, 2P1. Now, when we are going to ionize the beryllium, we have to take the electron from the 2S electron, right? Whereas, in case of boron, we have to take the electron from this 2P electron, from the 2P subset. As 2S electron is much more closer to the nucleus because S is totally as compared to the P, S is much nearer to the nucleus, so the binding force on this electron will be much more as compared to the electron in the 2P subset. And this 2P subset, you can see it is shielded from the nucleus by this 2S subset, so it will experience the lesser energy, lesser attractive force from the nucleus. So this will this binding force will be much less to the nucleus than this 2s. So naturally you give lot less energy, you have to get less energy to remove this 2p electron as compared to the 2s electron. And that is the reason the boron has the lesser ionization enthalpy as compared to the beryllium. And for nitrogen and oxygen, what is the case? Nitrogen electronic configuration will be, you know, 1H2, 2H2, 2P3. Oxygen as the electronic configuration, 1H2, 2H2, 2P4. So this electron configuration of the nitrogen is much more stable because of the Ohm's rule. We know in the Ohm's rule that half-filled or fully-filled subcell, fully-filled subcell, 
और हाफली फील्डेड सबसेल इज मच मोर स्टेबल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन सो हियर दिस इज दिस इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन इज वेरी मच स्टेबल सो फॉर फॉर आयोनाइज यू हैव टू गिव लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी एज कंपेयर टू द ऑक्सीजन इन ऑक्सीजन यू कैन सी टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी इन द टू पी one of the two p subcell and there will be probable repulsive force between them and this repulsive force will outweigh the increase in the electron charge increase in the nuclear charge so in oxygen nuclear charge is increasing increase but this repulsive forces in the two p electron will going to outweigh the going to counterbalance this your nuclear charge increase nuclear charge so in this case you can you need lesser energy to remove this electron from the oxygen and that is the reason oxygen have the lesser ionization enthalpy as compared to the nitrogen and that is you can see the reason for it there is an exception for this and we understand that can be explain with this method okay now we are going to that down the group what is the train in the down the group this is uh, to understand the train in the down the group you have this graph in this graph there you can see this is a atomic number and this is your ionized enthalpy and you can see that with the as we go down from the bottom from the top of your uh, group that is top of the group this lithium the, we are talking about the group number 1 the top of the group lithium then so then sodium then potassium the rubidium and cesium you can see there is a continuously the ionization enthalpy has been decreasing lithium is the highest that is around 550 then around 400 450 and then that is a potassium then rubidium and cesium so that is the trend down the group that as we go down the group we will find that is a decrease in the ionization enthalpy and across the period there is the increase of the ionization enthalpy and there is a exception in the group 2 and also you can find the group 3 that in the in the group 2 beryllium and boron and nitrogen and oxygen in the group 3 you will find there is the aluminum and magnesium right and with your no potash uh, phosphorus and sulfur you will find the anomaly means the exception in the case that whatever we the general trend is but actual ionization enthalpy is opposite so that we understood and i think you will um, understand and we will appreciate how the ionization enthalpy going to be in the periodic table across the period and down the group now we will do some exercise okay to understand to clearly the concept more this is the first question the electronic configuration of the elements a b and c is given by helium 2s1 neon coal 3s1 and argon this is a coal 4s1 we can represent the electronic configuration like this way which of the following is the correct order of first ionization enthalpy it is a is greater than b b is greater than c second choice is b is c is greater than b and b is greater than a and like this way we have to see from this you can easily understand that is the group one element here the 2s1 3s1 and 4s1 and we are going down the group and already the when we go down the group the ionization enthalpy is going to be decreases so 
A under is the energy A will be greater than B, B will be greater than C. So this will be the correct answer. A. A that is this is your which, which is now this is your lithium and this is sodium and this is your potassium. So this is the group 2, the pure 2, pure 3, pure 4 and this is the group 1 element. So this will be the answer. Okay, I think it is clear to you. You have to mind that you have to keep in mind that as we go down the group, the ion enthalpy will be going to be reduces. In the question number two, which of the following elements is the most electropositive? What do we mean by electropositive? Because it can it can easily donate the electron means the element will have the low ionization enthalpy. Is me kya kya na? Unhone bola hai electropositive element kaun sa hai? To isse apko pata lagega, isse apko andaj karna hai. They are talking about that which is the which among this element, which element having the lowest ionization enthalpy. So you have to see, this is the pure 3 element. You can see this is the pure 3 element. Right? In this pure 3 element, you can see this as we go across the pure, the ionization enthalpy will go into increases. So magnesium will be first one, then aluminium, then this phosphorus, then sulfur, uh, right? So accordingly, the magnesium will be the most electronegative. Is it so? If we make this right, then the answer will be wrong. Why? Because the you have to go to the depth of this electronic configuration. The magnesium has the electronic configuration is, you know, this will have the neon core and 3s2. Whereas aluminium have the neon core and its electronic configuration are 3s2. 3p1. Here, the electron from the 3p orbital can be easily removed as compared to this 3s orbital. So, magnesium will not most electropositive. It will be the aluminium. The answer is not magnesium. This will be the aluminium. Okay. I think that is understood, that you are able to understand what I need to say. So that is all for this today's video. We will discuss uh, more things in the next video. Until then, all the best and be best. And you can share the video to your friends. And I think they will be much more benefited out of it. Thank you very much for watching.